So something happened. <laughs> for the love of glitter. On my birthday, April 29th, I decided to take a pregnancy test because I felt like, it's really embarrassing, but I was a lot gassier than I've ever been in my life and I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't eating junk food and so I was just like, I'm going to take a pregnancy test and I couldn't sleep so it was one o'clock in the morning and I decided to take a test. I looked at the test and it was a very faint positive and I was like, is this real? <laughs> so I walked upstairs where our bedroom is and Travis was passed out asleep and I was like, does this say positive? And of course he's like, he's always grumpy when you wake him up when he's asleep. So I turned on the light and I was like, is this a positive? And he was like, I think, I don't know. And then he just kind of fell back asleep. And so I was like, I think this is a positive test. <clears throat> After that, I took two more, same thing, very faint positives, went to the doctor and found out that it was indeed a positive pregnancy. They did a blood test. When I first went to my OB appointment, which was just like a week ago, I found out that I was further along than I had thought. I thought I was nine weeks and some days and come to find out I was 11 weeks. So they said in that case, normally they go with the ultrasound as opposed to the woman and what she thought her period was because... Uh, that's a big difference, that's a big gap. If it was just a few days, they'd go with whatever the woman says, but that was a pretty big gap. So I was really excited to learn that I was further along than I thought I would. We got to hear the heartbeat. So what's really strange is everyone says that once you go to the very first ultrasound and you hear its heartbeat, that's when it begins to feel real. Well, for me, that's still not the case. It still feels just completely unreal and unbelievable. So I hope, I hope it kind of sinks in that this is really happening. It just, it's still so crazy to me that we grow humans inside our bodies. And I know that's like no news to any of us, but it's still just so, it's just so weird. It's just so weird. I'm going to go over some of my first trimester symptoms. I'm going to leave it down below when to skip ahead. So first I'm going to talk about my symptoms and I'm going to talk about things that I've started using or I've been doing or things I've bought for this pregnancy. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first symptoms, like I said, was bloated, gassiness was the first thing that I was like, this is really weird, what's going on? <laughs> um, a lot of discomfort. And in the first few weeks, my breasts were so tender, and they get tender during my period, but I mean, this was bad to the point where I'd walk downstairs and have to, like, hold myself because it just hurt so bad. And honestly, as soon as I found out that I was pregnant, I went and bought a maternity bra because wearing a regular bra was so uncomfortable. I have two maternity bras now from... Target and they almost look like a sports bra, but they do have little cups inside of them and they have been Such a saving grace especially during that time because it was so So sore and it gave me more support, but felt really comfortable as well and they're really comfortable um, If I can find the name or the link I'll put it down below for you guys so you can check that out. They're not too expensive They're about under $20 I did not know tired until my first trimester and you always hear people say I was so tired when you're pregnant you're tired but it's like a whole new level of tired I mean all I wanted to do was lay on the couch and I do not know how women who have to work through their first trimester do it and I am so thankful <laughs> like I work at a school and this happened you know I had to work maybe like two three weeks for the first trimester and even that was really rough, like I was really tired, I felt like I wasn't going to make it every single day, I was just tired, I'd get hot flashes, it just was not a fun time. So I'm really thankful that like summer has arrived and so I haven't had to work through the rest of my first trimester because I do not know where people find the energy to do it. And they also suggest you really watch your caffeine intake. Um, which has been pretty difficult because I do drink coffee in the morning and now I've gone down to a cup or even sometimes half a cup. It depends if I really feel like drinking it. But it just kind of stinks because sometimes when Travis and I are out and about, I'll drink a tea and you don't really realize your intake of caffeine until you're not allowed to have it anymore. <laughs> and I'm sure that's with a lot of things. But So cutting out caffeine has been a little bit difficult. 
but it is uh, something they suggest you do. Um, so I've been doing that. Uh, I have been so lucky because I have had no morning sickness. And I'm sure a lot of pregnant women would love to kill me right now because I feel so bad. I don't know. Especially the woman who works. She's tired. She's got morning sickness. Props to you. I don't know how you are doing it, but that is so hard. <laughs> I think I'm really lucky because I, my sister, she, I kept asking her, I was like, you don't have any symptoms. Nope, I don't really have any symptoms except maybe heartburn. And my mom, I don't, she couldn't really recall much of morning sickness. So I honestly think that maybe it's genetics. My family is just really lucky. I was so surprised that I have not got morning sickness because I get really nauseous in car rides and I just, I mean, really not just to the point I throw up and I have to take Dramamine and I get, so for some reason I just thought, well, I get really bad motion sickness and I get nauseous all the time, so I'm gonna have morning sickness, but no, I have not. I've been so lucky. So lucky. Food aversions, not too many. Sometimes I'll just eat something and it just doesn't taste right at the time, but sometimes I'll eat it later and it tastes fine, so I'm not... <laughs> really sure what's going on there and then for me like I just don't want to eat meat like if it's mixed with something I can eat it but just by itself I, I don't know what it is and it's so bad because you want to eat a lot of protein for your baby and so I don't know I'll have to figure out something else I actually wanted to see if I could drink protein shakes because I have seen different things online about it's good or to avoid it or call your health care provider so that's probably something I'll ask next time I'm there um, I'm trying to think of other symptoms. Uh, my my nipples have darkened a little bit, but not too bad. At one point, my armpits were getting darker. I'm not sure if they still are, but that was really strange to me because they've never been dark before. Um, but other than that, I'm sure I've had mood swings. <laughs> but other than that, let's see. I don't know. I think that's about it. Sometimes though, the gas pains have been really terrible to the point I just, I don't even want to move. And uh, there's different stretches you can do for gas pains or you can also like rub your belly and that kind of helps, but you have to drink a lot of water. I've experienced constipation on and off. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'll go just fine and sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle and it just doesn't really happen. So. That's also something to think about, and yeah, that's all. Okay, so let's get into things that I am doing, using for this pregnancy so far. So the first thing I started doing was taking prenatals, because they say even if you're just thinking about getting pregnant, you should take prenatal vitamins to get yourself started. And I have just been taking the one-a-day woman's prenatals, and the big thing about prenatals is the folic acid. It's really important for your baby to have folic acid. Um, I got these ones from Target. They range from like uh, about $15 to $20 depending on the size bottle you get. And I know some women get sick from their prenatals that they take and these have been just fine for me. I had bought these from Target too and they're fiber and calcium gummies. The reason why I had bought these supplements is because the doctors say it's really important for you to take your calcium because the baby basically takes all of that from you and then the fiber because of constipation. <sighs> I had started taking these and I used to think they tasted good and then sometime within my pregnancy it was like I was saying like it's almost become a food aversion to me because I try to eat it and it just doesn't like my mouth starts watering in a bad way and I don't like it. <laughs> so I might try taking these again. I don't know. Or I'll just drink lots of milk <laughs> and eat fiber. <laughs> but yeah, I just, yeah, they're okay. They were good. They were good. <laughs> Next thing, uh, I actually was watching a pregnancy vlog and someone had suggested this. 
And it's Burt's Bees Lemon and Vitamin Bath and Body Oil. And she said she'd rub this all over her belly and everywhere else to try and prevent stretch marks. And she thinks that it really did help. I know that stretch marks are like a big thing where people don't know if it's really based off your genetics or if it is about you not scratching slash really keeping moisturized, but I figure either way, I'm going to try and I'm going to moisturize and I'm going to try not to scratch anyways, because I'm sure that even if you, it is genetic, I'm sure you can prevent at least some of them, especially by not scratching and all of that. So this smells really, really good and I do like it. I got this from Target as well and it's just a little over $5, so that's that. I've also been using the Cocoa Butter Formula Palmers, and this is Stretch Smart Cream. Sometimes I just go in between, back and forth between both of these, or use both of them together, and they both smell really good together. You smell like a lemon cake or something. <laughs> I have got a journal to write in my book. I was starting off by writing down my symptoms, but honestly I haven't written that much in it because I haven't really had many symptoms to really write about. I'm probably going to write in about it today. But I think it's really cool to keep a journal so you can like, so you can really keep track of how you're feeling and also for after the baby. And then you can give it to your baby when they get older. It's just something that's nice to have. So I got this one from Ross. I thought it looked kind of cool because it's like leather. Travis actually bought me one of these for Mother's Day because he was looking on lists of things that pregnant woman must have and this is on it and it was the Snoogle and I'm not going to bring the pillow down but this is what it looks like. So I haven't really been using it yet. I figure it's going to come in handy much more when I'm bigger. Like I said, I'm only 12 weeks right now. So um, it does feel like you're cuddling with something which is cool but the very first night I used it, I don't know if I got too hot or what it was but I just like threw it on the floor. And I was just so annoyed, and I don't know why, but it just, like, I think it's because it was sleeping with something new, and it just wasn't working out that night, so I was just throwing it on the floor. But I think when I get bigger, it really will be helpful, especially to rest your belly. But there's lots of different ways you can sleep and sit with it, and they're all on the back, so I'm really excited. It says, why to snoogle, lower back pain, hip pain, belly support, head elevation, sinus congestion, swollen ankles, post-delivery relief. So, I'm happy I have this because I hear that these really do come in handy, especially when you're bigger. And the last thing I have is I have downloaded an app on my phone and there's lots of pregnancy apps out there, but the one that I have is called, called Ovia Pregnancy. And it will show you the size of the baby, it'll tell you what's new with the baby, it'll tell you when your due date is, um, they'll compare it to like the size of a fruit or something, like right now it says it's the size of an apricot. Um, and I'll show you how big its foot is compared to the screen, and what your little baby looks like. So. I've really been enjoying this app. I do want to buy some books, some pregnancy books, or um, just some reading material. So if there's anything you suggest, please put it down below. This is my first pregnancy, so I will take all the advice that I can get. Um, I'm really excited because on July 31st, we find out what the sex is. I have no clue what it's going to be. I know that I have really enjoyed watching pregnancy vlogs myself because you get to see what other people are going through uh, if you're going through the same thing as them. And it's been really helpful and it's been really fun to watch. So that's why I decided to do them myself. So if you'd like to, go ahead and leave your guesses on if it'll be a boy or a girl down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe and give me all of your baby advice. <laughs> Bye.